The Airbus A220 has been carrying passengers for a little more than six years now. It's proven to be a revelation. Passengers love its roomy cabin, gigantic windows, and quiet interior. And the airlines love it just as much. Its unique blend of compact size, long range, and exceptional efficiency allow carriers to fly existing routes more profitably while also launching completely new routes that were never before possible. Considering the plane's growing status as a disruptor, what I'm about to say might surprise you. The A220 already needs new engines, and in fact, some reports indicate that Airbus could add a new engine option by 2025. But if the plane is already so new and so capable, why is it necessary to build an A220neo? Let me explain. Before hopping into it, I'm sure it comes as no surprise when I say I do a lot of research when making these videos. And while I strive to use reliable sources, it can be hard to spot bias in the media these days. That's why I use Ground News, today's sponsor. They let you see how breaking news is being covered across the world and political spectrum, so you can easily tell how a story is being covered by all sides. Right now, I'm researching a video about JetBlue's blocked purchase of Spirit Airlines, which is a politically sensitive topic. Now, when I go to Ground News and search for stories about JetBlue, it shows me more than 200 sources that are covering that subject. In a matter of seconds, I can access all those articles and quickly understand how it's being covered. Of course, I only want to use highly factual sources in my videos, and Ground News helps me to filter by articles that meet that criteria. It'll even show me who owns each publication, so I know exactly where the information is coming from. Ground News has a mission to bring accountability back to the media. If you want to do the same, simply go to ground.news slash Kobe. You can either sign up for free or get 30% off their unlimited subscription if you subscribe before March 30th. So be sure to check it out, and thanks to Ground News for supporting today's video. First, let's talk about how the A220 is powered today. Right now, just a single engine type is available, the PW1500G. This engine is a member of Pratt & Whitney's PW1000 family, and it's a remarkable piece of engineering. Its biggest innovation is that it uses a geared turbofan architecture, which adds a gearbox behind the primary fan. This allows the fan to spin at one-third the speed of the low-pressure compressor and turbine, which greatly optimizes airflow through the engine. This can dramatically improve both efficiency and noise. Now, the reason the A220 has just a single-engine option stems from its humble beginnings. You see, the plane didn't start its life under Airbus's care. Rather, it was designed by Bombardier, the Canadian jet maker. Bombardier is a much smaller company with fewer resources, and selecting just one engine would help to reduce the plane's complexity. Doing so limited development costs, streamlined flight testing, and simplified the supply chain. And luckily for Bombardier, they ended up picking the right engine for the job. Leeham News reported that, at the time of the engine's introduction, it was performing about a half percent better than expected. On top of that, it was outperforming competing engines by up to two and a half percent. So if the A220 already employs the most efficient turbofan on the market, why would Airbus look to re-engine the thing? Well, it all boils down to becoming a more compelling competitor to the 737 MAX. You see, Airbus hopes the A220 will replace the MAX as the king of short-haul travel, and adding a second engine option greatly improves its chances of doing just that. Now, the A220 already has one major advantage over the MAX. It's a clean sheet jet, whereas the MAX is based off a 60-year-old design. As a result, the A220 is simply more efficient. This is a big reason why the A22300 has outsold the competing Max 7 by a count of 3 to 1, and Airbus plans to build off this initial success. They aim to create a bigger A220 variant to compete head-on with the 737 Max 8, Boeing's best-selling jet today. Ostensibly called the A22500, this new variant is projected to be up to 13% more efficient than the Boeing. Now, don't get me wrong, these efficiency figures bode extremely well for the future of the program, but if the A220 truly wants to supplant the MAX, it'll need to do more than just beat it on fuel burn. 
you see one of the biggest reasons the 737 has stuck around for so long is that Boeing has perfected its production. It's pretty cheap and easy for Boeing to build, which is a huge competitive advantage. It allows Boeing to offer deep discounts on the jet and still turn a profit. So while the MAX might be less efficient, the total cost of ownership remains on par with or even lower than the A220. So how can Airbus combat this? Well, first things first, they have to make A220 production cheaper and more efficient. And while they've thrown a lot of money at the problem, they still have a very long ways to go. Even once production is fully optimized, the plane might still be more expensive to build. After all, it widely employs composite materials across its airframe. In comparison, the MAX is almost built entirely from cheap aluminum, so the A220's bill of materials could remain higher for an indefinite period, compromising Airbus's ability to offer deep discounts like Boeing. So Airbus needs to find other creative ways to cut cost, and adding a new engine option could be a savvy way to do so. That's because when airlines go to buy a plane, they have to buy their engine separate. And today, A220 customers have just one choice of vendor, Pratt and Whitney. This means airlines don't really have a lot of negotiating power and are forced to pay the price that Pratt and Whitney sets. But adding a second engine helps to create competition. Now, engine makers will have to fight against each other to win the business of A220 customers, which could drive down upfront purchasing cost. Now, if Airbus is smart, which they are, they'll bring the CFM Leap engine into the fold. Doing so would benefit the A220 in a couple of key ways. First off, the engine is a well-known commodity. It already flies on the A320neo, 737 MAX, and C919. As such, it wouldn't require major modifications or extensive flight testing, and could be ready to enter service fairly cheaply and fairly quickly. But there's a second, more tactical benefit of using this engine. As it stands today, the Leap is the sole engine available on the competing 737 MAX. Hypothetically, if an airline had the MAX on order and wanted to switch to the A220, they'd have to pay a cancellation fee to both Boeing and CFM. But if the Leap engine becomes available on the A220, such an airline could simply reallocate its CFM order. That means they'd only have to pay a breakup fee to Boeing, and this could make it easier for Boeing customers to switch to the A220. So it's clear that creating an A220neo would serve to make the plane more competitive against the MAX. But equally as important, it would also serve as an insurance policy for the program. Remember, Bombardier originally selected just one engine partner because it simplified the supply chain, but it also created a single point of failure. If Pratt & Whitney faces any production challenges, it would have a direct impact on the health of the A220 program. We've actually seen this play out in recent months. The global supply chain crunch has made it harder for Airbus to churn out jets, and adding a new engine option could help make the program more resilient to these sorts of conditions. Now, just to be clear, adding a second engine option isn't a prerequisite to program success. After all, the 737 has thrived for decades, and it's stuck to a single engine for each successive iteration. But regardless, this could be a smart way to help insulate the A220 from supply chain issues. It'll also help protect the program in the event of a product recall. The 787 serves as a cautionary tale in this regard. Back in 2016, it was discovered that its Trent 1000 engines were breaking down. They were experiencing fatigue cracking in the turbines, an issue that posed a significant threat to safety. Dozens of 787s were grounded by airlines across the globe, and it took nearly five years and billions of dollars to triage and fix the affected engines. But miraculously, the 787 program continued to thrive during this trying time. It was still racking up orders, and deliveries continued at a strong clip. You see, the Trent 1000 is just one of two engines that powered the 787, the other being the GENX. That engine has proven to be quite reliable, and its operators were completely shielded from Trent 1000 woes. Had the Trent been the only option, it could have been a different story, permanently stunting the 787 program. Suffice it to say, this would have been a tremendous blow to Boeing. 
Now, if the A220 continues on its trajectory, it might become just as important to Airbus as the 787 is to Boeing. And there are serious concerns about the longevity of its current engines. The PW1000's geared turbofan design is quite novel. Sure, the gearbox makes it more efficient, but it also adds tremendous complexity. Since the global fleet is still quite young, we don't have a good sense of how well it'll stand the test of time. Meanwhile, the competing Leap engine uses a far more conventional architecture. This conservative design means it's not quite as performant as the PW1000, but airlines might be okay with this trade-off if it improves durability and reduces long-term maintenance cost. Even if the gearbox does hold up, the PW1000 has been unreliable in other ways. It suffered all sorts of teething issues, from asymmetrical cooling, to engine vibration, to excessive corrosion. And these issues have had real-world consequences. In 2018, Indigo, India's biggest airline, announced it had already replaced 69 PW1000 engines on its fleet of A320neos. Around the same time, Airbus halted deliveries of Pratt & Whitney powered A320s due to a series of in-flight shutdowns. Now, Pratt & Whitney says that the PW1000 has gotten better over time, and its teething issues are largely behind them, but I found at least three instances of in-flight shutdowns involving the engine in 2022. Now, early prognosis says that these shutdowns appear to be caused more by software glitches rather than issues with the engine itself. But either way, it doesn't inspire a lot of confidence. And when you're competing against a formidable foe like the 737, it's the little details like this that can make or break a competitive deal. At the end of the day, adding a new engine option to the A220 serves a dual purpose. For one, it develops a direct attack on Boeing, allowing the A220 to better compete with its workhorse 737. What's more, it helps safeguard the program from unexpected issues, both with the supply chain and the engine itself. And the cherry on top is that all of this could be done for fairly cheap. Will Airbus actually build an A220neo? Only time will tell but I'm confident that Airbus is at least discussing this idea internally. And knowing just how savvy the company is, I wouldn't be shocked if the A220 gets new engines sooner rather than later. So what do you guys think? Do you agree that Airbus should build an A220neo? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Thank you so much to my patrons for helping to make this video possible. If you like what I do and wanna help the channel grow, go ahead and check out this link right here. And as always, if you learned something new today, leave a like and subscribe to keep learning. And until I see you again, don't forget to look up.